Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. Just a quick plug, there is also a second video up on the channel, which is an RTX 3070 Founders Edition review. So, if you're interested in GPUs, then if you want to go ahead and watch that video, it would mean an awful lot. You can find it linked in the video description or at the end of this video. Anyway, let's begin with the news. There is a fascinating thread on Beyond 3D Forum, and full credit to M for this discovery. He says, I cannot post links yet, but there's several very interesting public comments to the AMD staging DRM next branch in the Linux kernel. The first is titled Add GC 10.3 no ALLOC registers, and then tons of register fields. The next is add display to configure MAL for Sienna Cichlid. Uh, by the way, that's one of the code names for the next generation RDNA graphics card. Uh, MAL, by the way, is memory accessed at last level. Catchy, snazzy, don't you think? And the final one is display colon add MAL support, and it includes this gem. To do, remove hard code size, and then you can see uh, the um, code yourself. Surface up underscore size, if less than 128, multiply uh, 1024 by 1024. He comes to this conclusion that it's the infinity cache, which obviously I broke on the channel a while ago. And as of the time I'm recording this video, I'm very certain that this does exist. Of course, any information can be wrong. Uh, in fact, honestly, even if Lisa Sue herself literally sat me down, told me all of the information of the next generation GPUs, and um, said, yep, just report it as a rumor, Paul, and then, uh, you know, you're going to be super sweet. And when we officially announce that stuff, I'll be like, okay. And in my head, I'd still be a little skeptical. I, you know, will only trust things when they're officially announced. But... I do believe that this is quite likely at this point because I've been told by a couple of very good sources. It's going to be very interesting to me when AMD do announce these cards. I'm going to be fascinated too, not just in terms of the official announcement and naturally the performance of the GPUs, but also AMD's overarching plan for these cards and this architecture. I've mentioned before that scalability, to my understanding, seems to be the real reason that these cards exist, as well as affordability and uh, easy to manufacture. Basically, all of those three things come together, and you can naturally see how AMD, particularly in the position they are in the market, stands to benefit from this. I sound like a broken record at this point, but I'm very curious to see what APUs will be capable of. Assuming this architecture... Uh, scales as we think it does with APUs as we shift from DDR4 to DDR5 memory it'll be really interesting to see what happens in terms of potential um, because at that point too even on a 7nm process um, you could imagine that the performance would be pretty damn impressive because you don't need a ton of CU because they are running at high clock frequencies but naturally we could still add a decent number of CU, like let's say 12 or 16 CU, particularly as um, AMD shifts to the next generation process like 5NM. Obviously this is not happening tomorrow or anything like that, but it is still very fascinating to me what AMD are planning. Speaking of AMD and what they're planning, I received an email today from the company and they have confirmed that they have acquired a Xilinx, which is a fascinating purchase. A Xilinx, as AMD themselves describe, is the number one provider of adaptive computing solutions, which increases AMD's TAM, which is total available market, to 110 billion. This is immediately, excuse me, accretive to AMD's margins. All stock transactions with the combined enterprises now value 135 billion US dollars. If you're unfamiliar with the company, as uh, they're not necessarily well known in the gaming space, for example, they are a US company which really develops incredibly impressive 
Field Programmable Gate Arrays, FPGAs, and these are for a plethora of different uh, solutions. They can be anything from automobiles to data center products, aerospace, just a ton of different stuff, including uh, wireless communication. This purchase is pretty damn critical for AMD, I suspect, and continues AMD's philosophy of just being a company which basically can do everything. Intel, in many ways, are similar. Obviously, Intel, though, have just sold off its NAND business for about $9 billion US dollars that was sold to SK Hynix. So AMD are definitely becoming that company which can basically do any and everything at this point in so many different markets. And the final piece of AMD news today, the Ryzen 9 3950X scores 690 points, which is in single thread performance on CPU-Z, which is very impressive, to put it mildly. This basically crushes any and every other processor which has basically been tested before. In fact, there's another benchmark of the 5800X, again on CPU-Z, and, well, I think you can see the results yourself here. It scores 650 points, again, single thread performance, and this is way higher than what Intel have managed to achieve, even with the 10900K. The 10900K, depending on system configuration, scores around 580, 590 points. So this is at least about 60 points higher than what Intel can achieve with the 10900K. Again, um, we won't have to wait long until the Ryzen 5000 series launches. And uh, I'm really excited about it. Truth be told, I'm actually more excited. I think I'm probably in the minority here, but I'm actually more excited about the Ryzen 5000 series because I guess I'm just really interested to see what happens in the CPU space. Um, I think at this point, it's going to force Intel to really think things through in CPUs. And um, they haven't been on the back foot in so long in gaming and everything else. Um, and I do want Intel to be competitive, but maybe this will set a fire under their ass. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, I think NVIDIA are always kind of, well, you know, taking competition seriously. And I also know RDNA 2 is going to be amazing. But... Personally, in terms of purchase decisions, um, I want to pick up a, a Ryzen 5000 series CPU. I haven't decided which one, though. I haven't decided which one. Hopefully, availability for these processors will be good. But, um, yeah, that's my personal preference, obviously. I actually did a poll kind of recently, and I seem to be in the minority. More people seem to be interested in RDNA 2, and I do understand that it's very exciting to think of AMD back in the high-end GPU space after quite a while away. I think Vega 64 was quite competitive. Um, we had the uh, Radeon 7 again, which was pretty decent, pretty competitive, but they haven't managed to be on top of the pile. And there is, at least in rasterization performance, a good chance that they're going to be very competitive to NVIDIA. Speaking of NVIDIA, there are a couple of very interesting NVIDIA-related stories. The first is rumours of a 3080 Ti with 9,984 CUDA cores. This has been discovered, as many things are, by Kopi 7 Kimi, although they are now Kopi 7 Kimi for Virgil. Um, I'm assuming that's a Devil May Cry reference, but uh, anyway... The specs of this card allegedly will feature, again, 9,984 CUDA cores with a 384-bit bus. This would theoretically mean that the GPU is using 12 gigabytes of memory. I mean, technically speaking, it could use 24, but I don't think that's the case. If I had to guess, I think it's... Um, I personally think that there's a there's a greater likelihood that it's 12. I think that uh, 24 might be a little much in terms of cost. Maybe I'm wrong. 
The rumours have it, though, that, of course, the 3080 gigabyte model has been cancelled. And um, I don't know if that's true. I'm hearing through the grapevine it, that it is true. And instead, NVIDIA are pushing out the RTX 3080 Ti, which was, ironically enough, the first rumour. Um, there were even, as videocards.com point out, who I actually got this... Um, information from so credit to them um they actually point out the back um before the cards released there was a 3080 11 gigabyte and a 12 gigabyte es engineering sample and i actually remember that and for quite a long time i was hearing that the 3080 was going to exist at 10 gigabytes and then there was either an 11 or 12 gigabyte variant of the 3080, which was, of course, what we considered the TI with more CUDA cores. So it was basically closer in terms of specifications to the 3090. The 3090 features 10,496 CUDA cores, whereas the 3080 features 8,704. So this is much closer to the 3090, but not, not quite there. So obviously, um, this means that they can reuse the silicon. So for cards which um, sorry, for silicon, which doesn't quite uh, meet the criteria to hit the 3090, they can basically reuse that now for the 3080 Ti, which, again, makes a ton of sense. There is no release date associated with this yet, so it's possible that the card is not going to, le uh, to launch until next year. So we'll we'll wait and see. But while we're on the subject of NVIDIA, there is also another interesting story and that concerned the RTX 3070 Ti. I just, of course, reviewed the RTX 3070, but as always, there are, you know, cards which kind of fit in between, and it's not really surprising that we're getting a Ti variant of this. After all, it, we had the RTX 3070 Super, we had the GTX 1070 Ti, so it's pretty much what you would expect for AMD, uh, sorry, for N NVIDIA. And don't forget, AMD are doing quite similar too. We're seeing the 6800, the 6800 XT. I'm hearing there's going to be a 6700 as well as a 6700 XT. Anyway, again, we task Kopi7 Kimi for this information. And Kopi7 Kimi says that it's uh, 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, a TGP of 320 watts, and um, it has 7,424 CUDA cores. This seems to be in direct response to AMD's 6800 series cards. Um, well, you know, I, I, I personally think this is great. I love competition in the marketplace. I'll be very interested to see at this point what AMD's prices are for the cards. As of just a few days ago, when I reported uh, the latest information and that the uh, 6800 XT was either slightly ahead in uh, five games, drawing in uh, three games, or slightly losing in two games, and that was at 4K, um... AMD literally had still not figured out the price or release date. There were just question marks, according to my sources, uh, in uh, kind of documents. So I'm not surprised um, that NVIDIA are doing this. To my understanding, NVIDIA are still in front when it comes to uh, ray tracing performance, uh, DLSS, is obviously a major feature for NVIDIA. AMD allegedly have a solution which is going to appear in uh, November. I'm hearing it's going to be a driver update, but I'm very sketchy of the details. And whether that's true or not, I'm not so certain. So it's going to be kind of, to me anyway, um, and we will be doing a live stream of this tomorrow at uh, 4 p.m. UK time um, for AMD's uh, reveal of RDNA 2. For me personally... It seems like, and this is just a guess, AMD will be slightly ahead in rasterization, maybe within just a very small amount. I'm not hearing it's, it's big wins. It seems to be very close, um, just a couple of frames or two I'm hearing in some benchmarks, though it does seem to be a little better at uh, 1440p, but NVIDIA seemed to have a decent lead in hardware-based ray tracing performance. 
The question is, though, how will that scale given consoles are using AMD's technology? That's going to be a very interesting thing. So to me, NVIDIA, um, of course, uh, releasing new cards in their lineup and filling out the prices, which is also important. After all, right now, the 3080 and the 3070, there's a 200 US dollar price difference between that. And some people do want a card which is kind of in between the two. And this is also quite nice if you would be interested in a GPU, which isn't necessarily as fast as the 3080, but maybe you want just a little extra performance at 1440p. Again, to me, choices are really good, but I, I think in terms of gaming, this is going to be a really interesting season for AMD. I'm hearing that the availability of uh, the chips is really good for the uh, Ryzen 5000 series, as well, of course, as uh, RDNA 2, and furthermore, you may recall the letter that I, pub uh, that I published, which... If it was accurate, I do believe it was, it was being sent uh, internally from AMD to different AIBs, basically nudging them, I suppose is the best way of describing it, to take certain measures to, pre to prevent bots. The thing is, though, whether that's going to be enough and how many retailers are going to actually do it, who the hell knows? But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm really hyped to see what AMD bring to the table, and I'm really happy as well that uh, this is going to be an amazing season for gamers.